Well, hello and welcome back. Mr. Hill coming at you as uh, we take a look at uh, another little, perhaps long video on um, the meaning of slope here as it relates to linear or straight lines. So what I'd like to do is first of all, just take you through a quick little definition of slope, how we can sort of relate it to uh, the meaning of lines or actual uh, uh, objects in everyday life. And then we can take a look at calculating the slope um, a few different ways. And this should definitely help um, sort of get you off the ground and running as far as how to work with uh, these linear or straight lines that you're graphing and so on in algebra class. So first of all, when we talk about slope, we're talking about how steep. So think about the word steepness as it relates to slope. It's a good way to define it. Uh, there's lots of good examples of where you uh, can think about uh, the steepness of something in real life. So we'll take a look at that now. Uh, just a couple of quick little examples here and um, hopefully you'll be able to sort of relate that. And then again, slope or the actual word slope has a few different uh, words that mean exactly the same thing. So you can think about, uh, let's say a ski slope as an example. It's a good example of uh, um, the steepness. Obviously the, the steeper the ski slope, uh, the more challenging it is for sure. Um, the roof of a building can also be referred to as the slope. Uh, sometimes they refer to the roof of the building as the gradient as an example. It means the same thing. We can also think about a ramp um, that can also be referred to as a slope or the steepness or slant of a, uh, of a ramp or let's say um, uh, a road as well. It could be also referred to as uh, uh, a slope. Uh, again, sometimes with roads that are extremely steep going up or down, they use percentages to represent how steep that, uh, that road is going to be. So um, a couple of things here to keep in mind as far as calculating the slope and just the meaning of the slope. Um, obviously, slope is a number and what we need to do is sort of associate that. Uh, a good example here, again, going back to a real life one, is looking at a ramp as an example. And you can see with the ramp, uh, this green line here as an example, it has sort of an angle that this green line is from the horizontal line. And what we want to do is figure out, um, you know, how steep that actual ramp is. Now to figure that out, what we do is we look at how far up the ramp has to extend to the top. So if these are, let's say this is the uh, the stairs here, whatever you're trying to build this ramp instead of climbing the stairs. So we have the total distance from the ground up to the top of the stairs, which is called or referred to as the rise. And the distance that the ramp is stretched out over the horizontal is called the run. So those are the very those are the two pieces of information that are very important for calculating the slope. We have what's called the rise number, or how far up we have to travel in order to get to the top, and far how far over we go, which is called the run. Uh, so if we, we have those two numbers, then we can actually calculate what the slope of that line is as a number. So the slope is the measure of the steepness of the line. Again, we can sort of fill that in along the way here. So it's the steepness of the line. And then what we can do is relate the formula here to the slope, um, which is basically sometimes you refer to it as the change in, in elevation, elevation being height um, over a certain distance. So again, I like to use the word steepness as it relates to the slope of the line, filling that in. And um, again, we have a little formula down below which we can use to help us calculate the slope based on those rise and run numbers. So here's a good example down here. We'll do some later using the, the graphing ones. You can see that we have two points on this blue line right here. If I just go down a little bit, um, we have these two points right here. And if you think about the blue line as being the ramp, the idea is to figure out how far up you have to go in total. So this is the rise number here. That's the distance up. Notice that the elevation or the distance up is based on the, uh, the change or the difference in the y number. So we're going basically straight up vertically, which is the rise. And then we go over. Um, to the right here in this case, which is the run. So if we know what the uh, the rise and run numbers are, we can actually calculate the slope using this little formula over here, um, rise over run. So the rise refer refers to the up or down movement, and the run refers to the right or left movement. So if we have those two numbers, we can plug them into this little formula here, and we can actually calculate the slope. Now, the way they've designed the slope in terms of a number, or the steepness of the line, um, they use often use this little letter M here to designate the slope. And when we take a look at some examples later, I'll show you how we can also use the formula. This is the slope formula here that will allow us to calculate the slope without necessarily worrying about having to graph those points. So we can calculate the difference in the y values, which is the up and down part, and the difference or subtract the x values, which is the right and left part. So we'll take a look at those examples in a moment. But before we do that, let's just go down and we can apply the slope formula for these little examples down below. These are kind of some practical ones here to keep it nice and simple. Um, what you need to do first of all is identify the actual rise and the run numbers. So if you take a look here, you can see that we're trying to calculate the slope of this line here. 
the slanted line right here as an example. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out what the rise and the run numbers are, um, which are given to us in the question. So the up and down number here, the 140 refers to the distance up and down. That would be the rise number. So we can designate that as being the rise number. So this is equal to the rise. And the 100, or the 100 centimeters on the bottom represents the run number. And again, we can uh, just draw a quick little line there to represent that as the run number here. So if we have the rise and we have the run numbers, then we can uh, simply plug them into the little slope formula here, which I'll just write off to the side. So m, which is equal to the slope, is the rise divided by the run, which in this case, uh, we can just put the numbers in. So we have 140 there. Whoops, just move this over a little bit. So we have the 140 there, which represents the rise number. I can put that on top. So always put the rise. Remember, always put the rise number on top. So it's 140, and that's divided by the number on the bottom, which, of course, is the run number. We can put that on the bottom, which is 100. So normally with slopes, what you do is you leave them as fractions because it typically will give you a number on the top and a number on the bottom, which represents the rise over the run. But what you should try and do is either divide them through if they divide evenly, like if the bottom number divides evenly into the top, or at least reduce it down to lower terms. We can for sure get this thing reduced down a little bit by dividing the top and bottom by, actually I was going to go by 10 because uh, you can see there's zeros on the end of these numbers. So we can at least start by getting these numbers to bit. Uh, divided down by 10 on the top and bottom to get them broken down into smaller numbers. So that gives us 14 on the top, um, 140 divided by 10, and 100 divided by 10, of course, gives you 10. And then we can go again, actually here, by reducing it down by dividing the top and bottom by 2. So that'll bring us down even further, and we have a final slope here of 7 over Five. So that would be a good way to represent the slope. You could also represent it as a mixed fraction or decimal, but generally they keep slopes as fractions um, reduced to lowest terms. So the slope of this line would be basically 7 over 5, which means that for every 7 units you climb, you go over 5 units. So it gives you an idea how steep that line is. And sometimes with slopes too, it's good to compare one slope to another just to kind of get an idea in terms of how steep the line is. And you can see visually how steep the line is based on the line, and then you can go from there. So the next one, I've got this example here. This is a slope of a, a ramp. A uh, couple of things to keep in mind, though, with this question. Uh, again, we can use our, our line here to represent the ramp. You can see that the rise number is, is the up and down, so that's the 0.5 over on the left. And the run number on the bottom is 7. And again, that's the run distance between um, the start and the end part of the ramp. So taking a look at, uh, again, the slope formula. I've already got it uh, semi-written down here, I guess, at the bottom. You can see that the rise 0.5 over 7. And again, because we have decimals involved anyways, it's perfectly fine to, uh, to go ahead and divide them because decimals and fractions don't really mix together. It's one or the other. So I would recommend going ahead and dividing that through. It's going to be a very, very small number. And this is to kind of show you that the smaller the number, the smaller the slope, um, the, the, the more shallow or less steep the line actually is. In this case, 0 0.07 suggests that it's a very shallow. So for every half a meter up, you're actually going to go across 7 meters, which makes sense. If this is a wheelchair access, the ramp has to be sort of long. It has to be a long run uh, because you're going up half a meter. So that gives you very very shallow or easy ramp to climb, I guess. So in this case, just taking a look, you'll notice that compared to the first example um, with the skateboard, this one's going up. So the slope here is considered an upward slope, which make, makes it positive. But you'll notice in this one here with the wheelchair, if you look from left to right, um, even though it looks like this person's climbing in the, in the left direction here, the actual line itself is actually going down from left to right. So because the line is going down in this case, the slope, and we'll see this later in other examples, is actually considered to be a negative slope. So the answer here is actually negative because the rise number is actually minus 0.5 because it's going down half a unit and over 7 units like so. So taking a look at another example, and for now, just because it's a practical example, we don't have to worry so much about the direction, but uh, when we get into general lines on graphs and so on, the direction is actually very important. So looking at another example, here's a similar example where we've got stairs. Uh, going up, and again, we can sort of uh, indicate the slope by uh, the same idea here. If we're looking at basically the line from the bottom to the top, we can identify the rise over run. Again, the rise is the up and down number, so that would be the 7 meters, and the run is the 5.5. Again, we're in a situation where we have 
um, a fraction, or sorry, a decimal along with when we write the fraction of the slope. So when we write that in, uh, we can just uh, we can we can write the rise over the run numbers like we did before, and then of course we can just simply uh, we can simply um, just divide it on the calculator to get the actual slope as a number. So in this case, the rise is seven, so we have to go seven units up, and uh, the run number would be five point five. So we put the run number at the bottom, and then we can just go ahead and divide that on the calculator again. As I said, you've got a a whole number over a decimal number, and it's a fraction, so it's just easy enough to divide on the calculator. Remember, a fraction is a division. You don't have to make a decision, so you just take the top number and divide it by the bottom number. So here we have 1.27, and again, this line is going up, so it's considered positive. So that would be an upwards line there. Next one here, which is kind of a neat example, slope of the roof. They actually give you the entire roof in this one, um, so we can calculate the slope because um, the distance up or the rise number is 5 and this roof is symmetrical on either side we have an upward slope for the first part and then we have a downward slope so one would be positive going up and the other would be negative going down if you wanted to look at it in terms of signs we could just look at the first part which is the slope of this part of the roof here going up and so we just have to be careful because the the uh, the run number here is actually going to be half of this unit. So 8 is the entire roof across from one side to the other. So 8 is actually going to be um, the entire distance. But if you're just going up one side of the roof, of course, you have to divide the 8 by 2. So the run is actually going to be 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So then we can go ahead and apply the slope, which is equal to, again, the rise over the run number. We can slot those numbers in there. And the rise, of course, on top is going to give you 5. And on the bottom, we have uh, half of 8, of course, which was 4. That makes the run going up and the same equal run going down as well. So 5 over 4 works out to 1.25. Again, it's positive going up. So that's how you'd indicate the slope going up as a positive. And the slope going down, if you wanted to look at it going down the other side here, well, that would be considered the same number, the same, they call it the same magnitude, but it would be negative. So that would be the slope going up would be 1.25, going down would be negative 1.25, just to show you the difference or the comparison between going up versus going down. But then you have the same number. The sign determines the direction of the line. And again, when you're looking at these lines, always look at them from left to right. So that's going up and that's going down. So hopefully that gives you kind of an appreciation with slope in terms of the meaning in, in these real life examples. But then what we do is we get a little bit more algebraic and we have to be able to calculate the slope, let's say, of the line on the graph as an example. And um, there's a couple of steps here that you can sort of follow. And this process should help you to get into a sequence or an order or routine of steps. And you can use them every time when you're calculating the slope. So the first thing we need to do is mark the points on the line, if you have the little grid there. And then mark the first point closest to the left as the start and the second point as the end. And then we can go and try and determine the, the rise over the run from there. So we have a couple of examples down below. These are, uh, these are line segments. And what we want to do is start by marking the points. So I can use a different color here. Um, I'll just mark the points on these different lines as, uh, accordingly. This could be like point one here, and this could be point two. So this is your starting point here, and this is your end point here. So what we want to do is calculate the slope based on those two points. And one of the analogies that I usually give students is to pretend like you're living in an apartment, let's say right here. This is where you're living, and you want to go visit your friend that's up here on, I guess, the seventh floor. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, leave the apartment and you're going to um, go on the elevator. I always think we have to go on the elevator. Do I press the button to go up or down? In this case, we have to go up. So when you go up, remember, you want to count the number of floors that you go up. So if you start here, it's sort of like taking jumps. This would be like the first floor you climb from your starting point, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth. So you have to go up a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have to go up six floors. I'll just write it as positive six like so. And then we have to walk down or run down the hall, I guess, so many doors to get to our friend's apartment. So in this case, we're walking down uh, one, two, three to get there. So that would be positive three. So when you're looking at now calculating the slope, we've actually figured out the, uh, the numbers in reference to these two points. This is the up and down part. So this would be the rise here, which is the positive six and the run would be positive 3. So now we can just slot these into the slope formula, simple enough, uh, by calculating the slope, which is the rise over the run again. So I'll just write the, the formula here again. We have the rise over the run, 
And again, put the rise number on the top. The rise number would be the 6. It's positive 6 up. And the run number on the bottom, which is 3. So your slope is equal to 6 over 3, which works out nice to 2. So you can, uh, if it divides nicely into a whole number, definitely do that. Some students write it as 2 over 1 by just reducing the top and bottom. You can do that too, but it's, it's easier if, if it divides evenly into a nice whole number just to go ahead and do that. Now for this one over here, a little bit different, uh, we can mark, these are line segments, so they're, they're indicated by a start and an end. But remember, with a straight line or a linear line, you can identify any two points on the line and calculate the slope. Remember, the slope will always be the same because that line is uniform. It's always a nice straight line. It's not curvy. And if it was curvy, then the slopes would change based on where you are within the curve. So for these two, again, we can mark the start and the end. Again, mark the start is always the point furthest to the left, and the end is always the point furthest to the right, like so. And then we can go ahead and figure out what the uh, uh, what we have to do to get from the start position to the end position. So again, we're at our friend's apartment, or sorry, we're at our apartment, rather, at home base, which is on the starting line here, and we have to get in the uh, elevator this time and go down. So we have to go down in order to get to the floor that our friend lives on. So just like before, you can count the number of steps down or number of floors. So we have to go down one, two, three, four floors to get to our friend. Now, because we're going down four floors, um, instead of just down four or four positive, remember this is going to be minus four. So the rise number is actually going to be negative, which is good because this will tell us the sign of the of the eventual slope. And then the run. So if you're doing it this way, the the run number you'll see will always be positive. It's the run. Uh, number that's going to affect the actual sign of the slope. So just to complete this process to get to our friend's apartment, then we get down to the floor that our friend lives on, which is on the second floor. Then we just go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, looks like ten. So just to double check that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, in this case, we go down ten doors to get to our friend's apartment, which makes up the run. So just like before, we can uh, figure out what the slope is. I'll just write it here as m, which is equal to the rise over the run. Again, using these numbers, just like we did before, we can slot them in the formula. So we have a rise, which is minus 4, and the run, of course, which is 10. Now, like we did in the previous question, you can go ahead and uh, just reduce the fraction down if necessary. You'll see that we can divide 2 into the top and bottom numbers here, which helps to reduce the fraction down to lowest terms. Uh, so do that for sure because you want to keep it as a fraction because it tells you the number on the top with, related to the number on the bottom. So this is minus 2 over 5 reduced down. So this will be the slope of this line. Notice again it's negative. I can just put the negative sign on the top number, put it out front. The negative suggests that this line, of course, is going down if you look at it from left to right versus this line here from left to right is going up. So just to kind of compare the two. Also, you can look at the actual number parts of this. You can see this line is fairly steep. Um, which is significant in the slope of 2. 2 is a bigger number than the number 2 over 5, which if you reduce to an actual decimal is 0.4. So that, that kind of makes sense when you look at the line here. It's a little less steep, even though this one's going down. Okay, so hopefully that sort of helps in terms of calculating the slope using uh, lines. They might also give you questions um, where you have to plot the points on the grid. So if they give you two points as an example, you can go through the exact same process we did here, um, the only difference is, and again, the steps are, are given at the top, is you want to start by plotting those points on your grid and then just sort of connecting through a nice, uh, a nice straight line. So it says determine the line, or the slope of the line, rather, passing through each pair of points. Pair meaning that we have two separate points. Remember, the points are always designated as x, y coordinates, sort of like mapping on a grid. Okay, or a GPS. So remember, this is your home base here, 0, 0. So we start by mapping these points. The first point would be 5 and 6, so that sits right here as an example. And the second point, 7, 8, would be over 7 and then up 8, so that sits right, uh, right here. So 7 and 8 puts us right there. So again, just like before, we can draw a line through. Now this time, because it's not a line segment, we just draw a line that passes through both of those points. Again, the first point on the left would be your start point. Second point would be the end point. Just like we did before, you can uh, think about the analogy of going to your friend's apartment. So this would be like the start here, and this would be the end. I know it's a little bit harder to see on this one, but we can use our arrows to designate the rise of the run. So just like before, we start here. We want to get on the elevator and go up to, and then in this case, we would go over uh, 
2 as well, it looks like. So in this case, it looks like our rise is 2 positive because we're going up 2 and over 2. So that makes the slope calculation for this one fairly straightforward. M is equal to, uh, again, the rise over the run. So use your rise over run formula for this. And a good way to remember this, again, uh, we talk about it uh, in classes, is that uh, you always do the rise first, which if you think about a track meet as an example, and you have a bunch of lazy players that are laying around in the tra track meet, the coach is going to be yelling at them to rise up first before they run the race. So rise always goes on top. So 2 over 2 gives you 1 here. That would be your slope. So this is kind of a nice uniform slope here. Um, for every unit you, uh, you go up, you go over 1 unit. So the second example here, same idea, we can start by mapping those points. So we have negative 6, uh, 3. So if it's negative, remember you go to the left, um, in this case 6, and then we would uh, shoot up 3. So positive is always up when you're going on the y-axis, but negative, of course, and we're all, always start with your x direction going left to right. So this would be the point u here. And the point v over here, minus 2, minus 3, would be over 2. Um, and then down 3. So this time you're going to go down 3, negative to the left 2, and then down 3 puts us right about there. Just want to make sure I get the point right. And then we can go ahead and uh, draw our line in and connect the point. Again, these, these lines that are going in are lines that are continuous. So technically we want to make sure we, we pass the line through the points and sort of extend it on. And if you're doing the line in general, it's always a good idea to uh, put arrows on to indicate to the, the viewer that the line does go on forever. It's not just a line segment that has a beginning and an end. It, it does go on in either direction forever. It's continuous. So having said that, now we can figure out what the uh, slope is. I'll just scroll it down here so we can see it a bit better. Um, using our little arrows to figure out the rise of a run. So this time we are starting here, the furthest point to the left. And we're going to end over here at this blue dot. And we're going to get on the elevator this time, and we're going to go down. So if you take a look here, you can see we're going to go down to get to the floor that our friend lives on. So we just have to figure out how many floors down we're going to travel. So we're going to go down one, two, three, four, looks like five, six. So we're going to go down six floors. And it kind of makes sense, because if you're, if you're on floor three, and your friend lives three floors below ground level, then you're going to go down the three floors to get to ground level, then another three to get to your friend's floor. So you're actually going down six floors. Again, because we're going down, it's minus six. And then again, we can figure out how many doors down we have to go to get to the friend's apartment, which is here. Let's try and straighten up that arrow a little bit. And uh, you should be in pretty good shape. So once we get down here, again, you can count the first door as one. Count the grid markers, each one is one, but don't count your starting point as being one. So we go over one jump, or one door down, two, three, four, so that's positive four. So again, we should be able to slot those numbers in, uh, keeping in mind that the up and down number is the rise, and the left right number here is the run. And again, as I said before, if you're doing it using this little strategy pattern uh, that I'm showing you here, the run number notice will always be positive. It's the rise number that tells you whether the slope is, is going to be up or down, or the sign of the slope, whether it's positive or negative. So in this case, the rise number is negative because we had to go down six floors, and the run number is, again, always going to be positive, doing it this way, which is going to give you four. So it doesn't divide nicely. However, we can divide the top and bottom numbers by uh, two. We can cut them in half. To reduce the fraction down. So let's do that quickly here. You can see that if we divide 6 by 2, that gives us 3. We have minus 3 on the top, and we have uh, 4 by 2, or 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our slope for this line would be negative 3 over 2, and it makes sense. It should make sense based on the line. You can see it visually, because this line, if you look at it from left to right, think about reading the line of a book from left to right, you can see it's actually going down. Right? So it suggests it's a negative slope versus this line here is going up from left to right. So that's why it's a positive slope. Again, if you're looking at the numbers, it's a little bit harder to see visually here. This, this number is 1, um, which kind of gives you an idea how steep this line is. Even though this line's going down, this number is actually 1.5. So this green line is actually a little bit steeper, even though it's going in the downward direction. So I've been able to show you calculating slopes using either a line on the graph if they give you a line. You mark the points like we did here and make sure you mark any two points on the line. Um, it's easy to mark points that are either at the ends of the line if it's just a line segment or points that are easy to mark um, inside the line as long as they pass through grid markers. That's easy to mark those and count the rise of a run. Or of course plotting the points here 
and using the um, um, using the line here or the rise of a run between those points to calculate the slope. Now, having said all that, it's still a lot of work because you have to graph it um, potentially, and you have to read the graph, figure out the rise of the run, and you might have situations where these points are really, really big numbers. So if you had a number like minus uh, 16 as an example, you're off the grid, so it's harder to graph and it's harder to calculate slopes or rise of a run if the numbers are really stretched out um, or the numbers that are given in your points are really stretched out without graphing it. So having said all that, we can actually default instead um, to what's called using the slope formula. So eventually what you want to be able to do is calculate the slope given two points, any two points on the line, uh, but not using the graph, instead using the uh, the slope formula. So with the slope formula, it's still the same idea where slope is based on the rise over the run, uh, but we're using the slope formula that I mentioned before, and it's based on the fact that you're taking the difference in the, in the y, or subtracting the y numbers on the top, and dividing by the difference in the x numbers. So basically, the top part is um, attached to the rise, I guess. So this is the result of the rise here, there, and this is the result of the run down here on the bottom. So the number on the top is the difference in the, in the y numbers, and the number on the bottom is the difference in the x numbers. Now, they put this uh, the little subscripts on, uh, like y2, y1. It just basically means the number in the sequence that you're given. So I'll give you an example here. It might make a bit more sense of this. Uh, we have two points right here. So I'm just going to set up a little table of values to show you here how it's set up. The first point that we're given is minus 9 and 3. And the second point is minus 7 and negative 1. So what this means is that you have your, this is like your x1, y1 point here. So x1 refers to the x1 number, which is minus 9. y1 is the y1 number here. This would be the x2, or the second number, my second x number. And this would be the second y number here. If it's also helpful, without getting too messy with this, we can highlight you know, the x number is one color, so we'll focus on those numbers for part of the calculation. And we can highlight my y numbers, the other color. And then we can apply the, uh, the formula directly. The only thing, and I, I usually see students make errors in this when they're practicing for the first time, is you have to remember to get the rise um, subtraction, or remember that y is connected to the rise part, on top. So you always have to subtract the y numbers first on the top. Uh, because it's connected to the up and down, remember, and the run is on the bottom. So having said that, we can go and do the subtraction. Uh, when you're subtracting, if I follow the formula order, my y2 is the second y number, and I'm going to subtract it from my first y number. So that's how I would set it up in the formula. So I'm going to take my second y number, minus 1, and subtract it, um, or minus, the, the, uh, the first y number. And then we can do the same thing on the bottom. A lot of students will ask me, you know, is the order important? Well, it is in terms of subtracting. If I'm going to subtract the bottom number from the top, I have to subtract the bottom number here from the top there. So that order is important. But in general, when you're calculating slope, as far as which numbers get subtracted first, it doesn't matter as long as you do the y subtractions on the top and the x's on the bottom in the same order that you subtract them. So having said that, in the bottom, it's a little bit tricky for this one because we've got some negative numbers there. Uh, so we start with our x2, which is negative 7. And then we subtract, and I can use a different color here to show you the, the part of the formula here that we're, we're subtracting. So we subtract the top number, which is negative 9. So we actually have a, a, a double subtraction there. I would put it there to be consistent to set it up. So you just have to watch on the bottom with the signs. Signs can sometimes get people if they're not careful with the signs, especially when you're adding or subtracting in the end. Like if we take a look at the top, minus 1, minus 3, well because both numbers are the same sign, we're actually adding the negatives or we're adding the debt. So it's like only one friend one dollar, another friend three, that gives you a total of minus four. So you're adding the negatives. However, on the bottom we actually have what's called sandwich signs between the middle two. So these sandwich two signs here, negative, negative, remember it's like the rules of multiplication of negative numbers. Whenever you multiply two negatives, it becomes a positive. So we switch a root to a positive there, and then we can finish off the, uh, the bottom calculation. So we still have minus 4 on the top. And on the bottom, uh, take note that both numbers have opposite signs. So remember, when they have opposite signs, we subtract. So if we take uh, negative 7 plus 9, well, 7 away from 9 is 2. Um, and because 9 is the bigger number, it's positive. It just gives you positive, uh, positive uh, 2 such. Uh, and we're basically done. We just have to finish off the process here. Uh, you'll see that 2 divides evenly into 4 uh, 2 times, and because it's negative, 
we make sure we write the negative sign on our final answer. So the slope of this line would be minus 2. If you visualize the line, if you were if you had a graph or if you graphed these points like we did in the previous question, you'll see the line is going in a downward direction like so. So really, it might seem kind of complicated using the formula until you get a chance to practice it, but it really is ultimately the most efficient way of getting the slope because your numbers might be large, the numbers they give you, and um, and or it's just harder to actually visualize the rise of a run on the graph. The numbers are fairly easy. The graph is good, but obviously it could be a little bit harder if you get some, some larger numbers, especially with the negatives. And watch the signs when you're dealing with, with the negatives as well. So I'll leave it there. Sorry for the long-winded video, but uh, again, thanks for, for uh, watching and uh, liking the video as well. Uh, I'll try and make another video here as sort of a sequel to this once we dig a little bit deeper into working with our straight lines. But for now, it's just important to understand what slope means and how to calculate the slope using these various methods. So until the next video series, Mr. Hill, over and out.